Hi guys, this is Molly Keck with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service and I just wanted to give you a little information in case you're interested in the 4-H Entomology team, which is a team that we started in Bear County, um, I don't know, about maybe five years ago. And I coach the kids to get them prepared for the entomology contest that comes up in December. So if you're not familiar with what 4-H is, basically it is the oldest youth organization, older than Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Um, it's a youth development organization. The kids have all sorts of opportunities of, of projects that they can get involved with. If something isn't available, you as a parent can start a new project or, or a new club to utilize some sort of a curriculum. There's a lot of different contests or project shows. And so the end result of being a part of 4-H is to compete in these projects or these, these contests and hopefully earn ribbons and do well and be recognized for the things that they know. So we have um, a club, we have 4-H represented in every county in Texas, actually every county and parish in the nation has a 4-H program. So if you're not necessarily in Bear County, you can still join Bear County or you can join whatever county it is that, that you're a part of if you're in Guadalupe or if you're in Kendall County. Um, and you can still compete in the 4-H contest if you want to and still come to the, the clubs. I don't care what county you're in. Um, I just want kids to be able to have a chance to compete in this if bugs are something that they like. So there's two options that you have if you want to join a club. Traditional club meetings would be really akin to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts where you have your den and it's led by some sort of a club leader could be a grandparent, um, a former 4 h -er, some other community member, a parent generally, who leads the club. In this case, it's led by myself. Um, and you are basically assigned to that club based on where you live. So they'll, you'll call the office and they'll ask where your major cross streets are and they'll tell you, oh, this club is the closest to you. This is probably the one you want to join because they're going to meet closer to your house. Um, and these clubs will offer different opportunities for the kids, community service events, educational opportunities, different get togethers, fundraising. Um, so they usually meet monthly. And then within that month, you can do different projects. Maybe that same club will offer, hey, those of you guys who are interested in doing um, fashion show, we're going to meet on Mondays, uh, you know, this month or something like that. So there's opportunities within that club greater than what you would just get with a spin club. A spin club is like a special interest club, and it's um, you join that with the idea that you're just going to do that special interest. And in this case, it would be entomology. And so you're really only required to participate in the entomology practices and meetings. And these were, these little spin clubs were developed for kids that had so much going on that being part of 4-H was a little bit too much, but there were still things within 4-H they wanted to do, like robotics or debate, something else. Really, the only two rules... Um, to be in 4-H is that you have to be in third through 12th grade. There's opportunities for kids in K through second, but our entomology spinning club doesn't really offer that. A traditional club may, however. Um, and in order to compete in the contest, you just have to be eligible. So you have to be passing all your classes. Your principal has to sign off on something to say that you're eligible to compete um, and that you can head off to the contest. On the entomology team side of things, and really that's all that I know, so if you have questions about other things in 4-H, I'm not the one to ask. Um, you would want to call the office and ask our 4-H agent or our 4-H secretary. But basically, I offer practices about once a month. We come in, we sit down, and I talk to the kids about, okay, this is in this, this insect is in this order. This is what it looks like. This is how you can identify it from other insects. You need to know its order, its common name, what kind of mouth parts it has what its life cycle is, um, where it might live, if it's beneficial, a pest, or inconsequential. Just have no general things about it. So if they're given a picture on the contest of this bug down here, they would need to know it's silverfish. It's in the order Thysonura. You have to write all that down. It is a pest. It has chewing mouth parts. It is, um, has an ametabolus or incomplete metamorphosis and something about where you find it. So it's Definitely not as much fun as entomology camp. It's a lot more like going to school and learning specific things about these bugs. How much the kids need to know is based on their age. So if you're if you are in grades three to five, you're considered a junior and you only need to know like maybe 20 insects. Intermediates are grades six to eight and they have to know 35 or something like that. And then seniors are grades nine to 12 and they have to know 60 plus um, insects. 
And the end goal of this entomology team is that we practice monthly, we learn about all these bugs, and we compete in the district entomology identification contest. That's misspelled there. Um, and we will compete as an individual. So anyone that competes is, is, is acting upon themselves and competing as an individual with the opportunity to get a ribbon as an individual. But we also try to have enough kids to make up teams because if you have a group of, of, of a team, you have a, a second chance of getting your ribbon. And we usually do really well with, within our teams. The contest this year is December 7th. Um, I do not know for sure, but my suspicion is that it will be about 1.30 on a Friday and it will probably be in Kerrville. So this is considered a UIL function sanctioned event and so you can, uh, you, the school should allow you an excused absence. You'll get, uh, you know, you'll have your little eligibility form um, and that should act as your, your form that you can show them that you're participating in the event. So teams are made up of three to four individuals. So we hope to have a whole bunch of juniors that join, a whole bunch of intermediates, and then enough kids to make a team of seniors. And let's say that we have eight juniors. Well, we'll have four on one team and four on another team. And it's better to have four on a team if we can, because if somebody has a bad day, they only take the top three scores. And so you have a, a really good chance of, of getting a ribbon within your team. And that's kind of fun. They don't do anything together necessarily in the contest. They just take their grades, their, what they scored, and they um, take the top three scores and add them up and then rank everybody. So what this contest is basically is half and half, uh, like a written or an exam, and then an identification portion. Written part is just like true, false, multiple choice, matching. And it, if there is anything they have to write down, it's short answer. And then the other portion of it is they have they get a picture of an insect. They have to identify its order and its common name. Juniors only have five they have to identify. Intermediates have to know like 15 and seniors, it's about 30 something. So um, the older you are, the more you have to know. If you happen to be a senior joining and you've, you've never done this before, if seniors place in the top three teams or individuals, they now qualify to go up to the state contest. Um, there, sh there should only be seniors that are allowed to go to state. There's some talk about intermediates moving up, but um, Every, usually it's just seniors that get to go up to the state contest. And so then you'll compete against all the other kiddos and all the other districts um, that have placed in the top three or the other teams that have placed in the top three. And we generally do really well. For the past five years, we've placed top three at state. So we, um, our seniors usually do really, really well when we're competing against everybody else. Um, this year, it should be June 12th and it will be in College Station. It happens early in the morning. So if if you're planning on joining as a senior this year, you would expect to drive up the 11th, um, spend the night probably, unless you want to wake up like at five in the morning to get to College Station by eight. The tentative meeting dates that I have kind of set aside for our contest or for our, our practices are these, September 9th and 30th, October 14th, November 4th and 18th, December 2nd. Usually we hold this between 1.30 and 3.00. And they're on Sundays. They're all on Sundays. That's just the day that I know my kids generally don't have anything going on. It's always tentative because I will always change one or two. There's always going to be something that comes up. I've got to be out of town. My kid has a has a game. Two of them have games and we've got to figure out a way to get them across town. So, you know, I know things come up for me. Things are going to come up for you. You don't have to come to every single meeting. I just try to offer as many as I can so the kids feel prepared for the contest. And I, it's always at the extension office, but I am kind of looking into, I would probably like to do some web meetings and that way we can um, maybe just do it with juniors one day, intermediates another day, seniors a third. And that way we don't, you don't have to commit to driving your kids somewhere, leaving them there for an hour and a half while you figure out something to do on that side of town. Um, and we might be able to meet more and probably get a little bit more done, but I just need to kind of figure out what avenue I would use to do that, but I would like to do that this year if possible. So let's say that the ID contest sounds terrible. Your kid hates to do tests. It just a, doesn't sound like fun for them. There's another kind of self-run option. There's the entomology collection contest, and this is for anybody, juniors, intermediates, and seniors. Everyone competes at the state level. 
Basically, all you do is you put a collection together based on the guidelines that you're given, and you give it to me. And I take it up to College Station, and we judge it on the 11th, and then you hear how you did somehow. And I'll bring your, your collection back, uh, back to town for you. Um, if you visit my uh, Bear Entomology YouTube channel, you'll see some videos that I've made for how to properly pin insects and arrange them in your collections, and so that can be kind of helpful for the kids. Your requirements for how many insects you have to have is based on age also. So, you know, juniors only have to have 15 insects. That can be pretty, um, can be pretty easy sometimes. Okay, so if you're interested in joining 4-H or doing the entomology team, um, you just have to join 4-H. The yearly dues are $20 and then after October 31st, it's $25. Um, Pam up here, here's her number, is our 4-H secretary, best person to contact about any questions about 4-H. There's other things that your kids can do within 4-H if you want to do more than just entomology um, that, you know, they might want to do photography and, and take pictures of insects, right? But you don't have to commit right away. You have some time to think about it. Come to a practice or two, see how your kid enjoys it. Um, see if it looks like it's something for them. I'm not going to kick you out if you decide later on that you don't want to do the contest. It happens every single year. I understand sometimes it gets a little bit too daunting. They feel like they're not ready for it. That's fine. Come to practice, have fun with us, and decide later on if maybe the contest is for you. But I'll be sending out more information for you guys, so keep a lookout on your emails for that, and hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys at the next practice.